Hey guys, welcome to the third video in this series. In this video, we're gonna be using our HTML that we made in the last video, and we're gonna start making our SCSS in this video. And it's probably gonna go on to the next video as well, if not the video after that too. So this is where we're going to really give the website the look and feel uh, that we made in our designs. So let's dive right in. All right, so let's dive in and let me tell you a couple of key updates I made since the last video. In the HTML area, um, I added a background image to all of um, all of these portfolio pieces. And you'll see that I also added some CSS classes. We have, um, so let me kind of break it down. So we have our section ID called portfolio in that we have a container flex and a portfolio class in that we have an h2 with the class of title flex and we have six i believe one two three six portfolio pieces each with a different background image and that's styled through here and we also have a, all of these have class of portfolio piece and within we have portfolio piece title and portfolio piece tags and these are uh, the title and tags. And yeah, so in this video, we're gonna actually set up our basic um, fonts as well as our Flexbox grid. And I've actually created a brand new Flexbox grid from scratch in this code pen. So I'm actually going to just link this directly to the description below. You can also get a link. I'll try to put a sticker or whatever up here. And if, if that doesn't happen, for sure it's gonna be in the description below. So uh, let's get started. We're gonna have, um, let's get started with our fonts. So I know I'm using Google Fonts, so let's do that. So let's uh, go to our sketch file and see what fonts we're using. We're using Source Sans Pro and Laura. Those are the two font families that we're using. So let's do Laura and Source Sans Pro. And let's customize. I know we need Source Sans Pro. I know we need a couple of different fonts. For instance, that's black and that's bold. And Laura, we need regular and bold and regular italic. Perfect, so let's go in here and just put this in our HTML. Let's copy that. Actually, let's do the import. So this is going to go in our style. So this is going to be imported in our style directory. So the reason I chose to go this direction instead of putting a kind of link with an href in the HTML is because I want to separate the styles and the markup as much as I can. And of course, picking a font is a style issue, not a content or a markup issue. So we have that and we have font family, Laura sensor. Okay. We're going to get into that in just a sec. And I don't remember if I made this um, in the first video, but I also got a font awesome link that's a icon set and you can go to fontawesome.io and you can scroll down and get the bootstrap cdn for font awesome so you can copy this open up a link tag and in the rel put style sheet and the href paste that link and you have font awesome um, in your project it's pretty cool so now what we're going to do is we're going to first save this and we're actually going to create our first partial. What partial is, it's kind of like a miniature style sheet that you link to your main style sheet. And that's what another great feature about SAS is you can do that. So we can go 
new file and press underscore so our preprocessor or which is code kit can tell that this is a partial and not to process this um, so we're going to do typography and in here we're going to do import perfect so uh, let's do body um, let's to make sure that this is working let's do background light blue perfect that's working and let's take a look at our type let's take a look at our text first let's do body background oops sorry not background font family Laura and serif I, actually I'm thinking instead of writing this all out we may even in the future want to switch to premium fonts so uh, let's actually make a variable for our font families let's kind of move that around so let's go in here and do variables let's do it above here and let's do open source uh, hold on, what's it called again uh, source sans yeah. and do Helvetica and sans perfect let's save that and let's do just Laura here and it should still work oops let me capitalize this perfect let's check it out perfect it's showing Laura and let's take a look at our um, color as well Claire's 333 so let's copy that we're gonna be using that a lot so we're gonna make that a variable as well let's go in here and let's do fonts colors that's just gonna be our text color Alright, cool. So let's go back to our body font and see uh, what size we need and line height and so forth. So we have font size of 16 pixels and we have a line height or line height of 24 pixels. So 24 over 16 is 1.5. Uh, th I'm thinking we can decrease that. Let's see what 16 times 1.4 is. I think we can do that too. Um, so line height will be 1.4 instead of 1.5. Again, um, this isn't a client project that needs to be pixel perfect, so we can actually improve on the design while we're developing as well. And um, I'm liking that so far. Let's go back. And what I want to do is um, let's let's do um, our headings. So H1 to it's gonna be font family sort not source sans and it's gonna be font weight leave is 900. and let's check that out perfect and one more thing we actually forgot to add is an a, a CSS reset so let's just Google CSS reset and go to this we're simply going to copy this and we're actually going to make a SAS partial from it so we're gonna go in here to a new folder 
our new file, reset underscore reset dot scss. The reason we made it into an scss file is so we can just simply import it in here. Perfect. And now we can uh, not worry about any defaults bugging us. Now uh, let's go to our header and see what textiles we can work on. So notice that we actually have an area right here with our title on it, our site title. So let's focus on that first. So that is actually a Source Sans Pro and it's extra light. So let's go back here and, oops, uh, let's go in here and go to customize. And we need extra light as well. So our embed code will have 200 in there as well. So all we need to do is do that and go to our HTML and see what our head, our body, it's H1 ID site title. Let's go in there and do site title. Let's do font size. It's two RAMs. And a RAM is, one RAM is equal to whatever the font size of your body is. So two RAMs would be 16 times two, which is 32. And our line should be normal. Our line height should be normal, which is, let me see, uh, 32, 1.25. So we can actually do 1.25 in here. Perfect. And our font family should be, or font weight should be 200. See how that's looking. Looking pretty good. Now let's uh, take a look at some things we can work on uh, in here that aren't super specific. So H1, for instance, or H2, I'm sorry. H2 is going to be this and font size, two rems, and what else? Letter spacing, one. And 1.5 rems margin. Check that out. Looking good. Let's take a look at our links as well. Links are this orange color, so let's add that to our variables. We're not going to call it orange, we're going to call it links in case we need to change it for whatever reason. It if we keep the variable name orange and change it to something else, it's, it's just going to confuse everyone. So we'll just keep it to what it actually is, a link color. And perfect. And let's go back here. And that's going to be our A color link. These are going to be our H3. It's going to be font size, 1.5 rem. Line height is 33. And let's do font weight here, 700, which is bold, not black. Perfect. And we're actually going to have a underline here as well. So let's do text 
decoration, underline, save that. So we have some modifications as well. For instance, we have a white class, which literally just makes it white. So we can add a white and add a color white. Perfect. And we also have a center, which is text align center. So we're going to hold off on the portfolio textiles because they are actually in a class in portfolio piece. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of this series, I'm going to be using BEM or BEM uh, CSS naming conventions, and that means the kind of children, all the children within them are going to have the same sort of class name. I know it sounds confusing, but in the next couple of videos, I'll show you how that works. But in this video, we're only going to be uh, really styling things that don't have a specific class to them. Now what we're going to do is simply add our Flexbox grid, uh, which we'll use in the next couple of videos. So, so go to this code pen. Again, the link for this is in the YouTube description below. So make sure to click on that and simply control command A, command C it and start a new file called grid.scss and paste it in and save. And of course we're going to import that in here. Let's make sure our code kit is compiling it correctly. Uh, I should, I want to turn on auto, auto prefixer, turn on source map and do a compressed output. So let's go to our main CSS and see what's happening. Perfect. It's compressed it and it's a much smaller size than all of these combined. So yeah, that's one of another great benefit to using SCSS. So there you have it. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to really make everything work properly. Um, you'll also notice that since I added them, um, container uh, class started working and we have our container now, which is pretty cool. So in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to start really formatting the layout, get the buttons looking the way they should, uh, get this portfolio area nice and tidy, uh, add our background images, and really set everything up. Uh, this may take another video or two, so uh, stay tuned. I'm glad you guys are sticking it through and you're going to learn a lot. I'll see you guys in the next video.